Thank you so much. It's our pleasure to have you, sir. We have members joining from throughout the country. So we have uh, also our national president, Mr. Padmakar Bharadeji, is joining us. So once everybody is in, we'll start off with the introduction and the meeting will start. Good evening, Kiran, sir. How are you? Yeah, good evening, ma'am. How are you? I'm fine. Nice to see you. Oh, looking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nice, nice to meet you. Good evening. Good evening. Can we have all the members with their videos on so that we get to know each other? So we have our core committee members, Srikar Bharde and Priyanka Ganore, joining us for this event. They have been working to put this event together. And our core committee is a member of six, six member body. So we work together to bring up these events. And though everybody is like really uh, busy in their lifestyle, so they are making some time for the society through this club. We have Vishal, Charushri, Vithoba, Hibare. Can we have you all on video? <laughs> Namaste Vijay Kumar, sir. Ah, Namaste, madam. Thank you for joining. We'll start in two minutes once our core committee joins and some of our youth members are also joining. So we'll start off. After that, people will be joining. So we'll just start and continue whenever they join. So do you all want to introduce yourself by the time? The ones who are joining for the first time. Hi, Charushri. Hi, ma'am. You're not audible, Charushri. We also have Mahesh Mahindrakar. Hi, ma'am. Good evening. Hi, Charushri. Good evening. So, where are you from? I am from Bangalore, ma'am. Oh, great. Nice to meet you. Kiran sir must be knowing you then. All BVI members are. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, connected. Yes, ma'am. Nice, nice to see you. Yes, ma'am. Okay, I'm going to have done. So another one minute and we would start off.
So let's start our session for today. Welcome everyone to this interactive session on wellness and right living with our very beloved speaker, Sushrut Badheji, a very well-known author. We'll be coming to his introduction in detail very soon. So I would like to start this event with Gayatri Mantra. I want all of you all to chant the Gayatri Mantra three times. You can unmute yourself and start off. Om Bhur Vasvaha Tatsavitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Yo Yo Nad Prachodaya Om Bhur Vasvaha Tatsavitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Yo Yo Nad Prachodaya Om Bhur Vasvaha Tatsavitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Yo Yo Nad Prachodaya I request you all to maintain few seconds of silence for the upliftment of Bhavsar Samaj. Thank you. Thank you so much. So today's session is part of the BVI National Youth Club. All the members of this club are the youth who, who are part of our Bhavsar Samaj, especially part of Bhavsar Vision India throughout the country and some are from other countries also. So this club, the vision of this club is to bring the youth together. It is a very newly formed club. Of course, BVI, uh, Bhavsar Vision India has been there for a long time. But this youth club is a new wing that has started. I being the president welcome you all to this wonderful session that's going to happen with our speaker today and youth club the main vision is not just bringing the youth together but also sharing the knowledge experience and also having fun together so we have different kinds of events one is a fun event we join uh, online and offline for some fun we go out for outings and we have some games the other kind of event that we have is like today's something which is required for all of us beyond the professions, beyond what we do. And also we have something like skill development. If we have to uh, develop a particular skill, we need a platform where you can find those speakers. So Youth Club is trying to be that platform. And we have done quite few programs till now. And this is, all, this is going to be one of our very close to our heart program. Because the reason we chose this topic wellness and right living is in today's world we see that we all are going through a lot of stress a lot of ups and downs it's not that in the olden days the stress was not there but now it has magnified to a level that even though we know what to do to not have stress but we don't do that and we are somehow postponing the wellness always at the end of the items list the priorities list that we have so today's session is going to be trying to highlight what we can do to have that wellness and right living in our lives. I would request our national president Padmakar Bhardeji to please address the gathering and give us their, his blessings. So please unmute yourself. Hello. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, we can hear you. Uh, as as if, a, I'm a Padmakar Bharde, a national president of BVA uh, India. Yeah. I welcome you all for this session. Uh, I, just I just want to brief if you to what about the BVA. BVA is a Bhavshar region in India. Uh, it, uh, uh, it's a club at par with uh, Lions and uh, Rotary Club. Like how the Rotary Clubs and Lions Clubs are there, you know? Similarly, members are purely 100% Bhavsas. So we um, enlightened people are educated, our business people, we join together and we help uh, the poor Bhavsas and as well as others also. 
so we do a lot of programs um, we have the uh, more than around 50 clubs all over india we have the five regions every uh, state we have clubs and uh, we do a lot of uh, service oriented programs all over uh, india through this club i welcome you all for this uh, special health oriented uh, session congratulations priyanka and your team thank you very much thank you sir thanks for joining and blessing us i would request our treasurer youth club treasurer and program director srikar bharde to please introduce our speaker to the meeting thank you priyanka am i audible yes okay good evening everybody so i take immense pleasure to introduce our today's guest mr shushil bharde CEO of KBM Research Labs, Puducherry. Mr. Bade uh, has completed his uh, B.Tech from Pondicherry Engineering College. He's also done his B.Sc. Chemistry from Periyar University. Apart from that, he is the student of Sri Madhusudan Bhangle, who happens to be the founder MD of KBM Research Laboratories and founder trustee and president Midam Charitable Trust since 2010. He has also uh, been associated with he has also conducted multiple clinical trials and worked with CROs on patients Ayurvedic proprietary formulations. Coming to the publications, he has uh, worked on various publications such as Rhythm of Vedas, Rhythm of Isha Upanishad, Rhythm of Kena Upanishad, and the list goes on. Mr. Bade has also worked on few of the research papers which were published during the year 2021. So the, titled COVID-19 Moral Injury in Bhagavad Gita, which was uh, affiliated by Springer. Also, the other research paper which he has worked on is Impact of Vedic Chants Intervention Program on Autistic Spectrum Disorder. I would like to welcome uh, sir. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Srikar. Namaste. Thank you, Srikar. Just to add to that, I happened to meet our speaker in one of the um, paper presentations that I had gone for and it was such a pleasure to see such a personality who is working so much to bring the values of Bhagavad Gita and the Indian way of living in today's world. So proud to have you, sir. Thank, Thank you very much, much Priyanka ji. I missed listening to your uh, uh, session because it was at the same time. But if, if it is available, we would love to hear and I am also very honoured to be present and I am very uh, inspired with Priyanka ji's work also. She is doing a lot of wonderful work. I would like to thank you all for this opportunity for interacting with you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So we will start off this session. It is going to be an interactive session where we have collected some of the questions which our youth has asked us and most of them are quite similar but we have chosen the ones that would benefit all of us. So sticking to the topic wellness and right living, the first question that I would like to start off with is what do you uh, define wellness as? Like what all is included in the term wellness? We think that it is health or eating right or the, if I have to put in simpler words, if I eat, sleep and work right, is that enough and is that wellness? Okay. okay, thank you very much, Priyanka. That's a very nice question. Nowadays, we have a lot of uh, importance and emphasis being given to health and wellness. Because uh, wellness is how you uh, maintain your everyday schedule, how you are living in everyday life. Uh, if you look at it from the ancient Indian perspective also, uh, wellness was connected with the overall personality because otherwise health is now being divided into mental health physical health and people say emotional health is also a part of mental. Some people say it's not part of mental, it's a separately different one. But if you look at it from the ancient Indian perspective or how my teacher always says, he says there are four aspects of a personality and if you are able to look after all four, you can say you are in the best of uh, health and best of spirits. One is the Sharira, means your physical body. The sharira is I think we all have to uh, look after ourselves. If we don't take care of our body, then all the jobs that we do, all the other uh, aspirations, everything will not matter much unless we take good care of our uh, physical health. 
so exercise is required nowadays we have a lot of uh, emphasis being given in various uh, organizations also because for employees also if employees have to function well organization also wants healthy employees and first thing is the health which is physical but then just physical health is not enough for man he is not a machine which needs just physical maintenance only there are other aspects so then there is something which is mental health or which damle uh, ji says first is sharir then there is man mana or the mind so mind is uh, how we take care of our mind how do we control our mind there are so many uh, aspects of i think we all like to have quality time with our dear ones with our friends with our family or maybe sometimes with ourselves also because one thing we don't realize is uh, we are in a we are with ourselves all the time but we don't give any importance to us so there is one quality time with a best friend who is inside of us we have not discovered that friend yet and we are looking in everywhere else even the geeta talks about the same thing mind is sometimes a friend mind is also your worst enemy so the question is when is our mind a friend and when is the mind enemy that also krishna only tells in the geeta it is how when when your uh, mind is not able to identify that there is something good inside of you there is some you have a great talent you have a great uh, inner will when all of this all your goodness is suddenly being hidden by your emotions that time your mind is your uh, biggest enemy and uh, your biggest friend is uh, when you are able to channel your mind to do some works when you are able to focus on your work happily and you are able to over like you know develop your personality so the one sharira then man then there is something called prana also prana is i think anybody can uh, translate if you can if you want to have an interactive session is can anyone tell me something about prana what is prana yes please anyone if i may interrupt yes ji yes, of course no interruption at all there was we'll someone it. saying yes ji does anybody want to say okay i think prana is the uh, the essential energy like uh, okay. related to the breath the okay. way we breathe influences the pranic energy inside us this is what i feel absolutely yes yes actually in english if you translate it becomes quite boring it's called people call it oxygen but it's more than oxygen but even if you look at oxygen also whenever a doctor sees a patient after an accident even before doing any uh, you know investigation first thing is is the patient breathing well is he getting a good supply of oxygen otherwise put him on to ventilator then start the investigation uh, mekalaji wants to share something uh, yes you can please unmute if you wish to i would not mind uh, yeah you would not... you want to share something yes yes i just not be an interruption it would be a good conversation any time anybody yes please okay so you can go ahead. okay all right so this is the first thing prana is something which is very essential which is probably keeping us alive imagine if one day our lungs say enough i want to break you are all taking so many holidays you are not giving me any holiday i want to take a break that's it there is going to be our entire existence is that way defined dependent upon the prana and if you see the there are there are exercises for prana they are called prana ayam and when the pran is not inside of the body they say gata pran means the person is not alive only so one thing we must recognize is pran is very important if you see there are uh, if you go into pranayam there is a breathing exercise which needs to be done it is something which was developed by the ancient uh, yogis and rishis looking at nature trying to develop some of the higher qualities of nature so if we have a chance if i would like to suggest to the youngsters also that uh, pranayam has so many benefits but even just improving your lung capacity more than probably running two rounds in a ground jogging first time you will have burned this many calories but after three weeks also if you are continuing you will see the amount of calories burnt will go down because your lungs have improved yeah. but when you do proper pranayam in 40 minutes 30 minutes take out some time 30 minutes you just there are a list of pranayams there are a list of tutorials on how to do pranayam if you can just take out 15 20 minutes in a day every morning fresh air it's like how you charge your mobile phones you can charge yourself get a lot of fresh air there are so many pranayams there is one pranayam called anulom vilom which is so simple which can be done at any time it is something which helps control your mind also it makes you very calm and peaceful 
and if you see uh, if you just anybody you want to just try right now you can just blow air out of your nose if anybody can just try which nostril is active or both are active is there anybody one only isn't it mostly the mostly one left okay somebody has written left yes so sometimes it's left for some people it is right but for the yogis who were regularly doing this pranayam they got both nostrils active imagine double functional functionality of both nostrils being active i think when you, we know that very well when we get a cold our mother says turn your head and sleep the other way because one nostril is blocked and you get a good sleep after that it's like there is a big nadi channel inside these these are all clogged with these it's something like that pranayam is one important aspect so if you see that is uh, along with mind taking care of mind doing things that you like is fine take spend some time quality time with yourself you know, take good care of your body but then also pran pran also do something which fills you with energy which fills you with positivity we can call that prana if you go into the sanskrit part you will see prana apana samana udana vyana all we don't need to go into all of that but if you see pranayam is essential and this is something we should learn because if you don't learn today there is a good chance 10 years later 15 years later you will be paying around 30000 40000 rupees to a instructor from usa who is going to come and teach you how to do pranayam hmm. pranayam was already there in india somebody what was pran it went to china and it became chan from china it went to japan and became zen and then we have zen meditation instructors coming and teaching all bharatiya people only that learn proper zen meditation the real right way from an authorized guru we have no option then we we'll have to learn you do it or you'll be forced to do it when something is not a mess and it is said pranayama adi yogena sarva roga samuchayet meaning by doing pranayam you can dismiss all your illnesses also hypertension some people is having insulin issues inner issues so many aspects because nobody tells you when you go to the gym the instructor will tell you build your body like this build your body like that and i think people who are non vegetarians they will see broiler uh, broilers are pumped and healthy but people who they say no this is useless you people people some people who are non vegetarians prefer the desi variety because it is not having all the steroids mm-hmm. something like that is happening in the uh, gyms also a friend of mine went to the best gym in usa and uh, he had a kidney failure because of supplements that were provided another had uh, you know in the eye he was having blood suddenly there so it's like all of this is not looked after but this is the only exercise for your internal body organs also kapal bhati that will help you for uh, giving a kind of uh, exercise for your inner organs nobody teaches that so pranayam is an important aspect which i feel all you must try it's not so difficult uh, it is something which can be done easily ayukta abhyas yoga na sarva roga samudha is the second part meaning if you don't do it properly then you are going to like some people when they start doing pranayam pranayam is for becoming peaceful but if you look at them you see they are doing a inner wrestling only the eyes are all wrinkled and then you cannot lose uh, if you have appetite do it calm and peacefully you will get it controlled so that is uh, part 3 of the pran and then the fourth is the buddhi buddhi meaning we have an intellect all of us that is what is very special what is you know distinguishing feature of human beings from all other animals also is our ability to think understand and grow when we add some fodder for our buddhi it need not be spirit, spiritual or scriptural books only you may have some technical uh, what we can say love for certain field certain specialties so invest in growing your personality so i think good health and wellness is connected with what we say in hindi vyaktitva ka vikas if we are able to grow our personality wherever we are we can say we are in a state of good health yes sir uh, prankaj i think i hope i didn't go too long no yes. no it was wonderful right. thank you and have you yes. said that prana is one of the factors yes. to measure the wellness i just uh, got this in mind like we nowadays see ball spirometers right where people are made to blow that machine <laughs> to improve the lung yes. capacity And yes we yes. tend to forget that for thousands of years we have been blowing the shank absolutely like, yes and yes and that is like considered to be a ritualistic one right now but that was actually uh, close to health consciousness What yes yes, yes. even the sound is peaceful and uh, making uh, coming absolutely true so yes. like you said all the knowledge if we do not take care of it 
it definitely somebody else will take it and give it to us in a new packaging yes that's what and premium saying. subscription <laughs> premium subscription <laughs> yes, yes anybody from the audience wants to say something related to this topic or shall we go to the next question priyanka shrikar anything okay sir so that was a really broad uh, defining of what wellness is having understood that the the major question that everybody of our age think is uh, is perfection really possible or is perfection a myth so can you really lead a perfect life in all spheres of it without uh, losing balance for long period of time or is it normal and very natural to not have perfection but just keep working for it okay yeah, thank you that's a nice question perfection i can think of is most of the time is the aloo parathas that my mother makes it is always perfect every time and now i was always wondering how how is it and then in the how is it that perfection is possible now many times people get very irritated with perfectionists they say you are you a perfectionist keep distance stay away from me i don't want to be anywhere near because such people are cranky or this kind of thoughts are there because it's not possible or we cannot become perfect but the question is and there is a beautiful saying also in english which is very widely popular isn't it ignorance is bliss hmm. now ignorance is bliss so let me be blissful i want to be but they don't realize it's not bliss it is not ananda ananda is something higher ignorance is sort of bliss can we say we are happy with a doctor who is ignorant and the doctor comes and tells smiles i'm sorry i operated on the wrong kidney <laughs> will not we will not accept it at all we will say how can you when uh, if uh, even the security guard in a building if he is sleeping one day only in 30 days we'll get angry sometimes we'll go we'll fight and we'll fire that person also how is it that we don't tolerate uh, imperfection there when we are getting a building constructed one truss is missing if the architect designs that way or a small one program one program in a programming uh, language code or oh, only one mistake will the client accept that code no so everywhere perfection is wanted but ignorance is bliss is nice way to hide behind our own ignorance allow it to grow but that's a problem because it is a if you see every karma has a consequence so if we are not perfect in our actions so then or later those imperfections in relationships also it's like no i cannot have perfect loyalty can this relationship further progress no it will fall apart in some time or some time or the other so this aspect of perfection is sometimes daunting sometimes challenging i uh, i can again i have a very big bias towards geeta so i will my examples will keep going to krishna and geeta so here uh, arjuna is actually told by uh, krishna in the last chapter of the geeta where he says about what is uh, this is called a siddhi uh, has anybody heard of siddhi yes yes anyone can you just perfection is called a siddhi can someone tell me something about uh, what is siddhi we see in hanuman chalisa that hanuman okay. has ashta siddhi and ashta siddhi <laughs> okay all those those were the his siddhis are very uh, crazy okay but absolutely very powerful mahesh has told about method okay uh, so what we can say is Sid, siddhi is like perfection in a particular uh, domain uh, field now i think priyanka ji we can say by her regular practice of nritya mm. you you are going closer you know i'm not saying you have reached there <laughs> but compared to somebody like if you see the company like me who is not who is not at all uh, well versed with uh, that here i can say yes for from my perspective i'm not trying to say you have reached it but from my I, my point of view i will say yes this person is got some siddhi compared to me i will say definitely or somebody who is excelling so any work which you excel you become siddhi it's like uh, uh, i think it is jiddu krishnamurti who had told us what uh, dog is to what man is to dog god is to man meaning devas are all siddha for us same way for our dog we are like deva only isn't it mm. we can feed whenever the dog is hungry we know when the dog wants to go out for a walk we take him everywhere or her everywhere so something like that siddhi is what krishna is talking about in the gita krishna is a perfectionist krishna is somebody who is uh, always uh, speaking about it from the beginning but in the 18th adhyaya he says it's okay 
He says it's okay. Mistakes are a part of every action. There is no action which is never uh, done without a mistake. He said he gives an example. It is like a fire. Fire is brilliant, but when a fire is burning and the wood is a little bit uh, damp, what happens? There is smoke, isn't it? So that brilliant fire is masked by whose smoke? Its own smoke. Like that, every karma is covered by its own defect. But he says, don't ever forget your swadharma, meaning what you like, what you are connecting, what is your inner calling. When you start trying to go according to your inner calling, when you do sincerely without worrying about consequences of doing and just focusing on the action, Krishna says that siddhi is automatically reached, meaning perfection. Perfection is reached. Somebody likes a particular, even if you just look at any act, any action. Any karma, like I told Alukarate, probably my mother would make it not because I am going to say it's very good or very tasty. I was very hopeless as a child. I would only eat. I would not compliment. But she never bothered whether I compliment or not because she wanted to do that action right. Probably that is why it tasted heavenly. So what is divine is something which is close to perfect. Best uh, cricketers are called gods. What is the reason you call them? We know they are not gods. We we hear the stories of their financial transaction and we say, they are not gods like this, this, these cannot be gods. But on the field, when they work, when they, are, they have done, they have done efforts and repeated efforts, Siddhi or perfection comes. We don't have to worry about uh, imperfection because it's going to be there in everything we do. Somebody starts cycling for the first time, that person is going to fall because that is human nature. So imperfection is nothing. You don't need to add imperfection in your life because it's already going to be there. Our job is to eliminate it because that will only give us happiness. Perfection is not a myth. We just have to look around and get the right examples. Krishna has given so many in the Gita. Why do we need to go to Gita only? Look into our lives. We'll see some of the people who inspire us. We see they are perfect in their fields. So we can call them Siddha only. That is possible by human beings. And it is said low aim is a crime. So why, why should we ever try to aim something lower? So I think it's not a myth, uh, Priyanka ji. I think to that uh, question to your uh, to the audience, I would say it is worth aspiring. It's okay even if we don't reach the top of the mountain. We'll at least climb halfway or up to the at least as close as possible. Because who knows what is there beyond the peak of the mountain of life? When the mountains that we climb, we can see a top of the mountain. Life, we don't know. There might be some another beautiful ocean or another world there. Yes, please. Yes, please. So the, the word that you used, the Siddha. So we yes. see there are so many Siddha Purushas that Bharat has yes. given. Even today yes. when we uh, dig deeper into the Himalayan regions, we see so many people sitting there trying to attain higher uh, levels of life. So yes, they can be considered as um, our inspiration. I think, yes. But also one very beautiful point that you said was, your mom has been making those parathas irrespective of your compliments. And I feel that this nature of trying to give to people without expecting that compliment uh, adds to our wellness or do you? Absolutely. Or absolutely. And Krishna calls it Naishkarma Siddhi in the 18th day only. Hmm. Means it is a, I do my work perfectly whether or not somebody praises. Today somebody says you are intelligent, tomorrow the person may call you fool. But your duty, what you enjoy, what you are doing, you keep after doing it. You don't have to worry about anything else. Krishna says perfection will come to you. You don't have to run after it. Like uh, happiness, it is something like that. Uh, the US constitution talks about pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. But that's like a dog chasing its tail. No? It will never catch it. You, our Siddha yogis would say santushtaha satatam yogi. Meaning always in the state of happiness. It's uh, possible, it's not a myth. Uh, if you look at singers also, Lata Mangeshka, late Lata Mangeshka ji, she was called Gana Saraswati. Mm. I would say Saraswati Ma is there in her voice, listening to her bhajans, how many people who have never meditated learn meaning of meditation. And this is all throughout her life. She is not less than a lifetime is required, but there are people ready to do that also. Yes, sir. So this relationship aspect, if we go a little deeper, today's generation, I feel, that everybody, though they are well versed in their job or whatever talents they have, every part of life might be blossoming very well. But this relationship part is something that we see all in Instagram comments and the reels that we see today. We see that the youth is always uh, very 
disappointed and not very inspired of having beautiful relationships in life not just the romantic relationships but even at home the relationship with the parent the sibling relationship friendship all these somehow add to our wellness is what i feel which is yes. deteriorating to to a level that even today if you have uh, an issue inside and you're not able to talk it out to your parents or your siblings that will eventually lead to mental illnesses yes so what is your take on how do we develop this interpersonal relationships with our people around us absolutely i think i think one thing is we need to have a non transactional relation with people because even social media we create a bubble we like certain posts we create our profile we create our understanding everything and we want we post something we want a like we want a heart we want some comment <laughs> everywhere and then when it doesn't come we feel disappointed but then at the end even if we get a heart it gives you a fractional satisfaction after that you are again what is it oh, i got only one heart or i got only 500 hearts or 5000 it's still not giving a satisfaction but when you look at relationships whether it is at home sometimes people stay away from home but it is a non transactional relationship where it is just like a one way street like love is also always a one way street only it's not a business where you invest something get something in return even business investments are subject to market risk so we cannot really focus on returns all the time but this aspect of non transactional relationship if you just recollect with your friends some childhood friends you may everybody may have a set of people where meeting them seeing them may gives you a lot of joy lot of happiness probably we should try to cultivate that the best example many times is uh, it at home or at family also it may not be a blood relative also all the time but it can be with anyone sometimes even the person you have we don't realize we have interpersonal relationship with people whom we don't talk also when we go and meet and you just smile somebody that you seeing one person smile or you have a pet and just touching the pet gives you a satisfaction it's a non transactional joy so probably we should try to increase those moments listening to a music alone singing alone dancing alone even if you don't know to dance or anything like that which is going to give you and it's not just something which is looking for a gratification from somewhere somebody tell we can say that could probably improve our uh, quality life because life is about the moments and life is quite short nobody knows how long life is going to be but the moments we can control i know one lady in my village actually where our factory is there uh, this lady lives all alone her husband passed away is long back children dumped her actually don't care about her and she has been for nearly 9 years like that only but i have always seen her smiling no source of income also no big property also but she have seen her smiling all the time in 9 years and in 9 years i have met so many of my friends they had full circles of life going up down up down so many changes despite having everything around probably we need to identify what is giving us a satisfaction which is probably which is uh, cherishable Yes, please. So somebody had raised a hand. I think I'm not able to see. Yes, sir. Anyone from the audience has any question? So, having said that, we need to develop non-transactional relationships. There is another phase to it where you see that sometimes you are stuck in relationships with some narcissistic people or some toxic people who have not healed themselves, <coughs> who have not gone through. the process of uh, dissolving the trauma that has come into their lives okay so that somehow comes into our lives when we stay with them they do not yes we do not expect any compliment from them but some way uh, it their trauma translates into our life and our life is again at a risk with with yes. that exposure so how and how often should you be disconnecting with such people and to what extent can you go to in this disconnect process okay that's a very interesting question actually if you see uh, we have a shloka in sanskrit sarve bhavantu sukhina meaning when everybody is happy then only we can be happy that is one thing if my sister is unhappy mm-hmm. i cannot go around smiling all the time because i'll keep remembering my sister's trouble or my brother's trouble or somebody else's whom i'm connected with that is true but problem like you said 
toxic or dramatic for us only where it is like there is something we are looking taking care of ourselves that is also our duty our duty is are we progressing as an individual that is the biggest question we should ask if we are not progressing we need to draw the line again i will unfortunately unfortunately go back to the gita if you see krishna and arjuna first adhyay krishna keeps on getting so many statements by arjuna arjuna is supposedly uh, krishna's follower krishna has uh, agreed to become his charioteer he's done everything for arjuna but arjuna is now emotionally disturbed and he starts accusing krishna of probably having greed also as the reason for initiating a mahabharat Hmm. Now the savior is being cursed, or in Sri Aurobindo's Savitri, there is a line: "His enemies were the ones he came to save." Now, what do we do in such a kind of uh, situation? If you see, uh, Krishna did a very beautiful thing. He did not utter a single word. He allowed Krishna to uh, Arjuna. He allowed Arjuna to keep saying, "Arjuna said, Pitars will get disturbed. Uh, it will become. Uh, it is called Mitra Droha, Kulakshaya, Varna Sankara." A hundred thousand papa and shastras he started invoking. Krishna was quiet. Only when Arjuna turned to Krishna, saying, "I don't know," it's like a beautiful shloka actually. Karpanya dosho, pahatas swabhava, prucha mitvam dharma, samud cheta, yat shreya syan nishitam brohi tanme, chishyas teham shadi mam tuam prapannam. Meaning, when he said Krishna was approached, finally Arjuna realized Krishna is not uh, accepting. is not getting irritated he is saying calmly he is not even uh, you know getting frustrated with like arjuna or he is not giving any sanction or supporting arjuna he says i am afraid i am in confusion i don't know what is right for me please teach me and only then krishna starts the bhagavad gita meaning even though his beloved arjuna is a dearest friend his dearest friend also krishna didn't start advising without being asked so many times what happens is we go advising people even when they don't want to means i remember my own experiences with my friends i would go and try to advise especially in the very earlier days after studying the gita i wanted my friends also yes yes you understand <laughs> the more i went after uh, understanding to you know explain the more they were getting irritated and nothing was reaching to them <laughs> and that time around that time my teacher uh, damle ji showed me my guru damle ji showed me a book called das bodh mm-hmm. that das bodh is considered to be first book of behavioral psychology written by the guruji of uh, chatrapati shivaji maharaj only and there was first line murkhanche lakshana meaning the ways of a fool and i thought it was like my profile description only <laughs> because it started with the first line vicharla vina sange to murkha when somebody who speaks without being asked mm-hmm. so i think first way we can cut off is not speaking unless we are asked for a solution that is one and second is uh, if somebody is uh, causing harm to us toxically you are trying you are all good intentions also it basically it is that when the person does not want to listen and only wants you to be like a reinforcement of their ideology mm. you should not engage in that probably give that person a watermelon draw eyes on it and tell you talk to this watermelon <laughs> he will be good company to you than me but we have we shouldn't because ultimately we have a dharma towards ourselves hmm. protecting ourselves growing and like we know that life is pretty unpredictable so why waste even one moment of life in sorrow when if you cannot do anything and the person does not want to learn from you doesn't want to change doesn't feel like you are going to add any value then you should not be a recycle bin of that person's thoughts hmm. can ask that person to go elsewhere and try to empty it is probably what i feel because even psychology also psychiatrists also they start that and leave means first when the uh, sanction is given then only the psychologists can start functioning or a psychiatrist the patient doesn't ask they cannot intervene at all mm-hmm. yes sir that's a very beautiful point that you made that do not advise as long uh, like unless you are asked to do it ji ji because we are not only demeaning ourselves but we are yes, also yes. disrespecting the knowledge that we are trying to give yes and one more thing i just wanted to add is uh, in gita again <laughs> again in gita uh, after 18 chapters means krishna has given adhyay 18 adhyayas of knowledge and wisdom to arjuna hmm. normally if i spend 15 20 minutes advising my friend i will be full of dadagiri and say you better do what i said now 
but look at arjuna has been told by krishna for so long normally you would say it would be probably two and a half hours of gita upadesh with vishwarupa darshana so many higher metaphysical truths all of that krishna says yathe chasi tatha kuru means you are free to do what you want means krishna is not saying do what i am saying and that time arjuna says no i will do as per your golden words because i have got the understanding so here it's a beautiful freedom or sanatan dharma is also about that freedom where orders are not being imposed rules are not being imposed they develop naturally without any of that so when we give also to somebody who has asked advice we need not get into this kind of circle where a person must listen just remember krishna the boss has spoken for so many adhyayas and still said yathe chasi tatha kuru do what you want you want to run away now please run if you want that's what krishna tells us you know yes sir that's that's a beautiful example thank you for that yeah, thank you thank you so, having understood the um, relationship aspect let's go move on to the health aspect a little more so some of the people had asked are there any specific combinations of food that you are supposed to have and you're not supposed to have because uh, like food is all of different kinds of chemical chemical as in the natural chemical not the synthesized Yeah, yeah. So there might be some combinations where they do not interact properly, and they might cause something bad to the body. So, do you have any suggestion on the? Yes, yes. Actually, I mean, you see those viral videos, isn't it? One person making a very special healthy juice mixture, puts Kerala also in it, puts some seven exactly. dipping bitter, all of it because medicine is better. But what happens because of that is in Ayurveda, it is said actually that this is this can cause uh, damage to the liver also if they are. the content of the ingredients so what happens is people take advice from elsewhere as adults i think everybody gets a small understanding of their own body in ayurveda they say identify your uh, prakriti which is which dosha is there is kapha vata and pitta for somebody who is having a kapha dosha that person you give him curd whether even it's it will not help him that much because that person is likely to be at night time you give him a curd a guaranteed he will have a cold hmm. so his body prakriti is like that so that person probably can try to if he wants to take curd he can probably try to take curd in the afternoon time or when it is uh, this summer season or he can try to dilute it with water and make buttermilk something like that so according to the body type there is one thing it would be nice if you know some of you can just go to a nutritionist or a dietitian or maybe an ayurvedic person and try to understand your prakriti have a discussion like you have with different people what is good for my body But if you are not able to do that, also I think we have a life experience. Some people eat spicy food, still have no problem. Their bodily health, they are conscious. It's like what you eat, what you ingest. If you are conscious of it, ninety percent of the problem is solved. But we need to understand. If you see, Gita talks about three types of foods again: Rajasic food, Tamasic food, Sattvic food. Uh, if you look at your grandfather or grandmother, they will take Sattvic food only. You give them best burger, they'll say no, thank you. I don't want it. Sattvic food is that which is not going to be heavy on the body. Sattvic food is that which is going to be uh, uh, what we can say to prolong your life. It is easy to digest. You don't feel like you are having a lot of weight after you have eaten it inside of your body. It is full of antioxidants. And uh, sometimes children say it's boring, <laughs> but it's not. It's good for the body. Uh, an example during my engineering days, I had gone for a badminton tournament with my friend, and my coach had given strict instructions about. diet and everything during tournaments but luckily or unluckily my coach was not present we had gone to yanam and during that tournament we saw the opponents we were like this is not a very difficult opponent we have seen their game it's not going to be too much of a match my friends had all right lots have already seen the lots let us my match scheduled in another 4 hours we have to have lunch he said here biryani is very good let's go and eat the biryani now our coach had given us already told us don't eat uh, heavy food But then what he told me, what your opponent is like this only. Don't worry. We both had nice spicy biryani before the match, and just when the match was starting, before the match we have something called dribbling, which we do before some light practice. Hmm. He also came walking to the net. I also came walking to the net. Both of us were already sweating before the first point. He said, "My stomach is burning." I was like, "Yes, I already feel tired before the match." Hmm. Now this is Rajasik food. Rajasik food is bad for health. you can identify it when you eat it or in a class where we have something called krishna's butter kids batch for children we have a free program of bhagavad gita 
so there we tell the same thing to children because children get we don't want to disturb children also because they have their taste buds also mm. they are young they like certain types of foods we don't want to crush anybody's uh, emotions also <laughs> but one boy told ma'am i don't like any uh, sattvic food i like only rajasik food and the very next day's class he had a very long face and he started saying ma'am i like or i have to eat sattvic food i like sattvic food he was having such a long face that the teacher asked what happened why are you feeling sad in the last 3 days i was eating spicy rajasik food now doctor has told me to eat sattvic food because i am having ulcers in my mouth so this is what body is going to tell you which is good for you probably and tamasik is a stale food which must be avoided it's not good because people have this habit of keeping things what you eat uh, into the refrigerator then eat it later some of the non vegetarian friends say the food which is after 2 days becomes tastier and in one person i know in college ate it had got food poisoning the other person who was regularly eating didn't get it but the other new person got it because it's not good the stale food is not meant for it gets starts disintegrating it becomes poisonous so fresh food food which is light which suits your body that is the ideal way but if you do want to exactly you know fine tune your diet according to your internal body parameters maybe people want to control their sugar levels or they want to reduce the what we can say triglycerides what foods have to be taken you can meet a why they are a dietitian and just see these are the things don't give me tablets i want to just understand because food is a medicine mm. when taken in the right manner it's true and one more last thing is they say three kala people who are eating three times they are rogi only mm. two times they are eating they are bhogi and one time is yogi mm. so if we can move to a diet of two times a day keeping 12 hours gap there's nothing more you know uh, i know a lot of people who are doing that it's actually very healthy also yes yeah. so adding to this like there are some people who can eat like a bakasur <laughs> they do not gain 1 pound but there are some uh-huh. people who even just smell the food and they they put on kilos. Cool. <laughs> they put on kilos so okay uh-huh. some bodies are so easily gaining weight yes 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 so here i see that it has nothing it has not only to do with the food but how our digestive system uh-huh. is how our body is digesting Absolutely. the food and taking the nutrients from it is also the point so we cannot put the entire responsibility on the food uh, it has to do something we have to take care of our bodies in order to digest it properly absolutely absolutely assimilation like you said as like even in cattle in a village it's like guy dooth kam de rahi itna chara de diya fir bhi dooth kam de rahi what's yeah. the use but another guy gave little chara also is giving more it's a conversion so best aspect is we have to observe how much conversion i am getting out of the food that i am eating yeah absolutely that's a very vital point you raised yeah so um having understood the food aspect now we'll go one step ahead which is the sleep aspect and today the youth has the worst possible sleep cycle thanks to the social media in addicting social media that is still a choice but there are some people they, they do not have a choice like they have to work in night shifts so Uh, keeping these things in mind that we sometimes we cannot avoid breaking the sleep cycle for such scenarios what do you suggest people to how do they take care of their sleep cycles when they are not having that freedom of choosing the sleep cycle yes see yes. i think uh, this is uh, connected to more of the quality of sleep that they can get no? it is like maybe timing is earlier earliest i mean best is uh, i think from childhood we have learned early to bed early mm-hmm. to rise make some man a woman healthy wealthy and wise but if that's not working for night shift at least some 6 hours of interrupted uninterrupted uh, sleep should be got and uh, one of the reasons people don't get that sleep is because of uh, disturbed thoughts thoughts which are connected with so many factors so taking sleeping pills will not solve the issue the source of disturbance will have to be uh, addressed otherwise uh, it is not and the uh, if you look at it go become like yogi <coughs> excuse me like a yogi it is uh, how is it it is uh, yogi is mast raho masti mein aag lage basti mein of course this is a very different uh, uh, what is not the exact uh, definition it's a colloquial way of speaking meaning when you are going to sleep what can you do to change a problem nothing can be done when you are sleeping so just at that time like a like you turn on the fan switch off the lights we need to learn to get into the act of like art of living is there there is an art of sleeping also mm. 
that is to be got what the yoga nidra is also there choose your way of going into sleep quietly consciously but really speaking it is just the 2 to 3 hours of beautiful deep sleep which gives all the energy to a person the first few or the other hours which are like they are all bonus which help you go into that state and then there is a waking state also so probably to get that quality of sleep first thing we'll have to do is let go of expectations of things do your work do all as best as you can that is all that is asked from us from from what we can say from even the divine hmm. divine is not expecting miracles from us or we have to do big big huge work just do our work to the best possibility and you get a happy satisfied sleep that you have done your job at least you tried it's okay you did not succeed but do your best and your work is over let's see what happens because i think best example we can think of as the farmers only is it when they they work they work so hard and then very recently the gingerly uh, farmer there was untimely rain it came and destroyed all his field entirely just in our village but still he is smiling i asked him how are you smiling because this is a loss no it's a loss for him of so many years of effort he said what it is nature how can we control nature i cannot control nature this is nature's wish we don't know anything nature is all powerful decides everything and this is from years of experience means he's seen success he's seen failure but he has learned to accept and digest both probably no matter if 100 people have insulted us mm. those 100 people are not going to be insulting you when you go to sleep mm. you can be conscious of that and just put on your favorite probably some dhyana music or not necessarily some people i know they go into deep sleep after listening to heavy metal I think everybody has their swabhav. All right, I will not recommend it. But if somebody does, the quality of sleep is what is something we should look at. And uh, sure. yes, you see, Swami Ramdev sleeps for three hours a day, and he works uh-huh. more than all of us. So Absolutely. He also says that it's all in the quality of sleep that you get, not the quantity. Absolutely. Absolutely. And in fact, these pranayam exercises that we spoke about and the yoga uh-huh. practices. they help us to go to that stage okay yes 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 actually uh, for me uh, i had a lot of trouble meditating hmm. when i joined but 12 years ago when i went to my teacher i was absolutely uh, i can say i'm less uh, restless compared to that time but hmm. that time it was very difficult so when i told my teacher i'm meditation jam nahi raha i'm not able to meditate he told acting kar i was like what he said kam se kam acting karo is what he told me and i was surprised i didn't realize when i was acting and then i just pretended he said don't move sit in one place quietly slowly slowly i didn't realize when like anulom vilom 90% of people who start doing that pranayam automatically fall asleep while doing that pranayam for 15 20 minutes my teacher would say don't disturb such individuals they are enjoying a very peaceful sleep <laughs> so yeah good pranayam actually helps us detach our thoughts also mm. and gives us a good quality of sleep that's a nice point yes see that could be an important thing for mm. ensuring it and i think we all deserve to sleep well yes it's something which is definitely nobody should be denied denied of that even prisoners get their sleep time isn't it for no matter what crime they have done yeah so we have not done such big crimes to deny ourselves absolutely yes see true so we have discussed quite a list of topics of how wellness can be put into our lives so joining all the dots what do you think is the meaning of the life that we are living does it have a meaning or just are we just surviving like how a flower blossoms and just dies how animals live survive and die are we also just getting a birth on this earth plane living here for some time and dying is that it or is there any meaning to a human life yes actually there is a meaning there is definitely a meaning it is we are all born we are all going through a process which we can call evolution all are going through that if you look at all the dasha avatars also one after the other there is an evolution in the avatar hood only if you see which is very much according to science all wasn't it uh, first avatar is the matsya mm. aquatic life to then amphibious kurma kurma to varaha terrestrial terrestrial to then uh, narasimha half man half so there is a slight evolution even ram krishna all of them the entire process so there is an evolution which we are uh, in that process uh, shri aurobindo says man is but an evolving god 
we are evolving there is a we are we say amrutasya putra vayam and then i think which father wants the child to remain underdeveloped or i don't want my child to become better than me if we say we are children of divine should we not become divine so the purpose of life is to evolve to remove all the imperfections because it is like a programming code has already been planted inside us isn't it from birth we go through this cycle of uh, what we say uh, i think janma mrutyu jara vyadhi but death old age disease everybody is going through the same thing every day like mobile phones we have to get recharged we have to go to sleep in the night but beyond that is this just a ordinary existence which is just happening anyway it's going to happen but is there something more so that seeking is required that seeking is required when you seek you will find young adi shankaracharya at 8 years only knew what he wanted to do his uh, teacher asked him who are you he started saying oh, beautifully is like manobuddhyanka chitta ninaham na cha shrotra jeve na cha gran netre na cha vyoma bhutme tejo na vayu chidananda rupa shivoham shivoham means he went on to say later on name mrutyu shanka name jati bheda pita neva mene mata na janm i mean i am not i am not my outer personality i am not my outer id i am not what my job is i am not all of this i am beyond all of this and i am divine maybe we need to realize our divine origin we must understand that it is something which is a integral part of our life and how are we going to realize it not by leaving everything leaving our duties krishna says uh, doing your duties you will identify the purpose of your life follow what connects with you because each person has one inner uh, what we can say swadharma and krishna says it's okay if you don't do a very big job also it's like you are working in a small industry which is not a large industry also is fine but you are going against uh, you're not going against your inner will mm. one teacher one participant in a geeta class she said for 17 years she was working in a very well paid job wanting to take a shift because that was not going as per her inner will and she said for 17 years i had a troubled sleep and every time i was feeling whether i have the courage or i don't have the courage and then she said i took that job finally after 17 years i lost my friends because a lot of my friends started treating me like now my income is less so the friends who were my circle started ignoring me but she said i wanted to enter the service sector i got into the service sector and that is giving me the greatest satisfaction i have no regret now now i feel i could have taken this decision even 17 years before something was stopping me so the service is important maybe as we discover life, purpose of life life is not like a movie isn't it movie gets over life goes on so that discovery can happen simultaneously but while doing it uh, we must uh, focus on what we can call loka sangraha in the gita krishna says uh, this betterment of the world and that is possible to anybody dr abdul kalam's mother she was in a village she didn't have the high education or anything like that but she wanted to raise a child who is having universal principles and she did not do anything else that way what what great service has she done when she produced somebody like dr abdul kalam who is like a father figure to so many True. dr abdul kalam didn't get married so so what he's got so many children in india mm-hmm. all of them look up to him so what we see is one person's action even a person in a petrol filling station if he does his job rightly he is alert he can avoid so many issues he can help people so there is service is the greatest uh, purpose probably if we can identify it and engage in service there is no higher no lower work our mm-hmm. teachers in lkg are just as important as our high school teachers or college professors they don't become smaller or lesser because they thought some other subject which is not so important yes see yes see we think that okay it's just a primary class teacher but she is the one who builds your mind which will actually work yes yes you required later and i have seen because now i am a teacher i have yes, seen okay. my students uh because they have not done well in their primary level because their uh, the mind uh, grasping things at that level was not done properly later on even small things you know it it takes time for them to understand and now they have to put a lot more effort to actually come to a normal thing normal level so huge respect to all the primary teachers that they are building the nation i would say yes yeah, absolutely yeah yes yeah. 
what a lovely session uh, thank you sir um, sorry so I really enjoyed it i yes. loved all the answers that you have given just thank you so much our viewers i would like to join the dots what we discussed first of all we discussed what was wellness and sir has explained it is not just about the food and health it's also about the physical body mental body the buddhi overall evolution of a human life so after that we saw that perfection is not a myth there are siddha purushas who are proving that perfection is possible even though they might not be 100% perfect but for us they are already perfect so in comparison in relative to us they are already perfect and we need to take their inspiration coming to the relationship aspects beautiful points we got lot of insights here like how we have to have a non transactional relationship at the same time throwing out the toxic and narcissistic people in life creating this balance of what aids you in your personal development is what we learned then we saw how the food is very a personal thing it's not a national prescription that you can give to the entire humanity that you should eat this 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 but it depends on your body your type of uh, digestive system and it is very specific to our bodies we also discussed about the night shifts and how you are supposed to have good sleep if you do not have many hours to sleep develop quality sleep is what we understood and finally we saw what the meaning of life is it is doing service and contributing to the whole big picture of evolution of man to become a divine god so what a spectrum of uh, topics we have touched thank you you have given the push actually all the questions you were leading into the discussion but uh, yes. the kind of conversation we had i really enjoyed i want to i try to ji yes thank you so much thank you thank you so much i want the audience to please come up and if you have any questions or if you want to say something you can go ahead <coughs> we have uh, jyoti sridhar chutke ji raising her hand please go ahead ma'am okay somebody is asking what is your daily lifestyle my daily lifestyle okay it is uh, for me i i actually manufacture ayurvedic medicines in a village so the village is quite away from the city so it takes me 45 minutes so i have to go uh, get up early recently now it is very hot in the summer so i started swimming that's why i've got a haircut which is very different from the poster <laughs> which you have, you have uh, you, so morning starts like that then i go to work i come back by uh, say 6 6:30 and uh, then there is a geeta class which i conduct at 8:30 to 9 8:30 to 9:30 so that is my general uh, what we can say life that is monday to saturday it is packed sunday is my time for off days whatever i do some writing but i think i don't uh, feel uh, that i'm doing much or anything because my teacher sir is 76 i live with my guruji he is somebody who can have a meeting at 11 pm in the night also at 4 am in the morning and uh, he is most young compared to everybody i feel because whatever topic it is business meeting also or anything related to adhyatma or satsang anything is always ready and he says a very nice thing that change of work is rest meaning exactly. what is change of work is rest you just move you don't need you're not like a machine that is going to get overheating because of running so much you're liking a work maybe you've got a little tired of doing the work he says you know to you should learn to start and stop your work you can always get a joy in doing different different things so that is about uh, my lifestyle you know, little boring what my friends say it's just <laughs> so okay but i don't get too much time for socializing as well that that but i think that you said I, that you are still feeling that your guru is doing much more than that i resonate with it because if, when yeah. i look at my gurus throughout the journey that i had i still feel like how are they doing all this at this age yes. and i am doing nothing in front of them we can gather grab their inspiration no we can just grab inspiration from them every it every moment absolutely. you are having this open sources of inspiration around you in yes, form of yes. gurus yes so yes. wonderful uh, uh, relation this guru shishya parampara that bharatiya sanskriti has given vande guru parampara vande guru yes. parampara very very true yeah we have jyoti uh, sridhar chutke ji raising his hand please go ahead ma'am you can unmute and ask we also have padma ji padma chira you can unmute and talk hello sir am i audible 
नमस्ते जी नमस्ते धर्मा because because of that there is there are more uh, forced re- religious imposes on us okay all right ji uh, so this is uh, i'm uh, padma ji you are from which city uh, padma ji you are from where sikindrabad sir from sikindrabad sikindrabad yeah. okay yes ji i think uh, if you see uh, from the times ancient times from ancient times india has been oppressed by so many invaders people have come and they have tried to destroy a dharma which is our hindu dharma which is called sanatan dharma meaning of sanatan itself is eternal so they tried so many ways they tried the kill the kill the butchered what we see in kerala story is probably a, a fraction of what has been happening for years True. the fire in nalanda for how many days that fire they tried to burn our scriptures also but they didn't realize that our scriptures don't come the knowledge of scriptures also comes from god they cannot go to that that source and you see that the evolution which is taking place our bharat is now moving ahead those who were oppressing us have now got a gdp much lesser than us a full cycle is taking place what we are seeing right now are the superficial what we see the fluctuations which are taking place but sanatan dharma is growing and getting stronger and stronger arjuna in first adhyay was depressed because He felt he is the guardian of Sanatan Dharma, and Sanatan Dharma is going to get destroyed because of his emotions. Actually, it was his emotions troubling, and he was himself not following Sanatan Dharma. Shatriya Dharma was forgotten. But when he got Vishwa Rupa Darshan, then he says, with folded hands, all afraid of that Raudra Rupa, the great uh, Vishnu showing him Vishwa Rupa. He says, Sanatan Astham Purusho Matome. I can understand now why this Sanatan Dharma is guard is eternal. because it is got a guardian like you and i will become the instrument is his realization what we see right now we see this wrong which is happening we must understand our dharma because it is free that is why it has just stood the test of time krishna didn't say i will curse you if you don't read my scripture krishna didn't say because you are following this you are supposed to go and attack everybody who is not following this so that freedom is a integral part of why we are like this the world needs light bharat is meaning of bharat only is light of the world a time is going to come uh, padma ji where we are going to become jagat guru and jagat guru is uh, not only one particular uh, country also it is going to be the guiding light for the world for that we need to have the vasudeva kutumbakam understanding but for that we need to have our feet firmly on the ground dharmo rakshati rakshita True. research and analysis wings motto Who? Oh, what is the raw is working continuously? We don't know. They might be present in our session also, but they are nobody knows uh, who is uh, agent who is working for what. All their life they dedicate for it. So we are now not in a bad situation, we'll say. But we need to hold on to our dharma. We need to protect it. But the beauty of our dharma cannot be crushed because of the outer situations. The freedom is there. With freedom comes the understanding and responsibility also. Which people are there who are realizing, and there have been people. When even Shivaji Maharaj, when he started Maharashtra, the concept of Swarajya was crazy. Adil Shahs on one side, Moguls on another side, Siddhi Jawhars on another side. One young boy, 16 year old, how can he think? How can he think of establishing? People said this is crazy. His father is already serving somewhere else. Look at this boy thinking and dreaming of something. But his vision was so strong that uh, so many people joined him. and his direction his action one man changed everything what they were calling mountain red now big later on people recognized him to be avatar of shiva himself True. and the entire state was formed that way so i think that is a beauty of our dharma ji we have this uh, we understand there are perspectives which are opposite even the movie that you are referring to is actually uh, showing us what happens when we are not grounded and knowing our dharma when we are there nobody can uh, nobody can uh, you know destroy anything just when you are add, here just to add to that like how yes, sir has said 
द मोमेंट वी डोंट डू आवर ड्यूटी दैट इज वेर द प्रॉब्लम स्टार्ट इट वॉज आवर ड्यूटी टू एजुकेट आर चिल्ड्रेन अबाउट आर धर्म our duty to know our scriptures our duty to follow the scriptures and keep things intact we didn't do that so obviously the outsider is going to come and touch it yes so instead of blaming them i would say we have to wake up to this reality that today we require a kshatra spirit like how arjuna had to bring out his kshatriya inside uttishta bharata uttishta bharata so the like padma ji said today so many things are happening the moment you understand that it is your responsibility to wake yourself up bring the kshatra spirit out make your children aware of your dharma if entire hindu population does this nobody can even touch us these are all problems because we are not standing with a strong hold on our dharma yes thank you actually this kind of dharma is in small small things like in our apartment system if one person where you are staying one person is experiencing a trouble which is against fairness If we close our eyes and say it's not my job, I have already so many responsibilities. You are not protecting dharma mm-hmm. because that person is not having enough uh, influence. You are letting that person suffer. Tomorrow that will happen to you in your vulnerable moment. You will not have. So everywhere we have to protect ourselves. So a lot of work yes. is required right now from all of us to wake up and in whatever levels we can. For us, maybe we cannot go to a political level and change things. Maybe some people can do, but not all. what we can do is stick to our dharma learn about it how many of us really have scriptures at home the original scriptures not some fictional novels original scriptures at home how many of us read them how many of our children know about the names of the scriptures at least so we are not doing the bare minimum and we are expecting huge changes which is not going to happen very soon hope that answers your question padma ji beautiful answers uh, from both of you i really agree with you and one more question can i just start yeah please go ahead uh, so now i feel that kids uh, really i mean through this education they are not uh, they are not gaining anything in fact they are having as we are talking about our wellness they having they are having most trauma with the education system what we are having today do you think is this necessary for the kids because in in the previous as i know whatever i know from my mother and all they used to study vedas and everything previously and uh, not by writing just by listening and keeping that in their mind they used to uh, forward it to the generations now that type of education is not there i think and it is causing so much of uh, trouble to the uh, kids do you think is it is this necessary is this kind of education is good Uh, yes, uh, Padma ji. Actually, uh, that is true because the education system is not complete. So there are various organizations working on trying to give that knowledge. Also. For instance, uh, my NGO which I am working for, they have free Bhagavad Gita class, 19 day program. Actually, because of the children's batch, uh, I was made to take the adults class because parents started coming and telling. Now children are talking about, I don't want Rajasik food, I want uh, Satvik food, and the parents don't know. Or in foreign country, when they are staying in USA. child is returning the pocket money he says this is my karma yog i don't want anything in return so they like these programs introducing the children to scripture for if anybody wants this bhagavad gita kids batches we have lots of teachers there's no fee that is charged uh, teacher training also takes place so anybody wants like that but you can introduce the children to it and most importantly you can tell the child that more than marks life there is something more in life and for that exposing the child to things which the child is not getting exposed to like take the child to a special school to understand a different perspective of life tell the child to be in part with nature take some some outing and uh, many parents are actually starting to homeschool their kids mm. i have had an interaction as a group of parents all india who are just homeschooling after taking children out of ivy league schools yeah getting an admission in ivy league is difficult mm. but these ones have withdrawn and they are doing their own and child has a morning chore of Kothimbir, I mean, coriander cleaning is the first part. Hmm. One, this work is required. That work is required. So practical knowledge, uh, importance of uh, all of this, and there's nothing more practical than our uh, uh, traditional wisdom that we have. We just have to connect our children to it. And best part of education is act- in actually in Sri Aurobindo's philosophy, it is they understand that each child is an Atman, born separately. With you, just have to. create the atmosphere child will start learning and gather anything 
Miss the child, you don't have to keep giving everything. Just give the right direction. Let the child grow. And that atmosphere, if it's not coming in the school, you have to try to provide that, uh, Padma ji. Yeah, Slowly changes are taking place and schools are also recognizing this because they are having problems dealing with children. Their children are telling, my father is giving you money. Don't scold me. Correct <laughs> me if you can. And my school time, my teacher would give a slap or a yeah. shot on the back. And my okay. friends also yeah. feel that yeah. was important. Point that you yes. said here, when I used to learn my dance, with my yes kids. yes i remember getting scolded like every day every day and the kind some gurus they used to throw things on us but we used to take it so nicely okay it is my guru throwing at me that's a problem. time has changed now we can say time has changed you cannot do that but i am blessed with such beautiful students that they take that from me also uh, but yes. usually if i see outside Today's students are not shishyas. They are just students. And mm. student and shishya that pavitra, is... Pavitra of the relationship has to be established. Correct. Before, I, I never knew anything about scriptures. I was, like I said, mechanical engineer uh, getting into this direction, which was absolutely opposite. Everything except mechanical engineering is what I had to do afterward. But uh, for me, in my school, there was one teacher whom I looked up like a guru. He was a physics professor. So that one idea is also sufficient if you can just find for your teacher one person that teacher can, your student can, you know, get inspiration from and create atmosphere is what we have to do. A good atmosphere for children. Excellent. Yes, please. Excellent point. Like, in fact, Padmaji, if I have to add to that, maybe we might not be able to suddenly drop that education because it it's required for our livelihood. But in parallel, we can start this teaching them at home. For that, we should learn first of all. We should know what are there. It is not just Bhagavad Gita, Ramayana, Mahabharata. There are so many which we can at least explore. We should know the names and introduce to the children whatever they like, they might pick one from them. So it is our job to create that environment because school is not created. Eventually, we will go to a place in future where again the uh, entire system of education gurukul gurukul system of education krishna also went to gurukul sadipani ashram true yeah we have divu ji has been raising hand from lot a uh, lot a uh, long time so please go thank ahead. you so much thank you so much for patiently asking that okay ma'am you want to ask something divu ji it's showing the name is showing as divu and divu Maybe the child's name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to unmute and ask something? Hi. Hello, madam. Namaskara. 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 Uh, just I want to, uh, it is a very good discussion I have ever uh, gone through. Very recently. Very, very nice, I felt. Uh, Thank sir, you. Sir, I just Namaskara. want to ask you what truly you want to achieve in life, sir. You talk so nicely. What I want to achieve in life? Uh, yeah, I what do you want to do? What do you want to do? You're so young. I have got uh, Guru Krupa for direction where every day works. I have to do and there are some principles I have taken out from the Gita. I want to practically follow it. Because I take Gita class just does not mean I am following all the Gita principles. So in my full lifetime, I can just one or two principles which you can follow and practice. And the motivation, if you see for that, I have my teacher or like Loka Sangraha, do something good for the world. That is sufficient and it is no bigger or smaller work which is good for the more good or less good. And I think we are all connected and we all know this because of Corona. Otherwise, we for a long time, we didn't think we were connected and suddenly, so this is our Srishti, we are part of Bharata, we have to try doing something. So I just want to continue at least what I'm doing without uh, deviating. That is my aim. I can say currently short term goal, long term goal is the same thing for me. Yes. Uh, all the best, sir. Thank all you. Best, sir. Sir. My blessings are there with you. Each you. Uh, drop Thank of uh, rain will make a big ocean. It is like this. Thank you. Uh, very, yeah, Thank you. I'm very lucky. I felt very lucky to hear today. I'm also very lucky, ma'am. Thank you. Madam. Thank you, Priyanka Barade, madam, also for arranging this one. Thank very, you. very nice. I'm feeling. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It, it gives us a lot of motivation to see. Thank you, ma'am. Well, blessings of elders, we get the uh, Exactly. Yes. You are so precious.
Yes. We have some comments in the cha chat box. Somebody has said, the fact that Gita's lessons can be applied to any and every aspect of life. This is what she has got from this session, which is a huge point because kids knowing Gita is a huge achievement. Yes. You might not have given the entire Gita, but you have given one direction for them to at least go open it and read. And that is really yes. a big thing, I would Because a lot of people feel Gita, Gita must not be read by youngsters. Hmm. My one uncle had told me, you better do go date Gita, don't read Gita. He was ah. his advice. Because this is not the age, do it after retirement, post retirement. But uh, as I started, I cannot say I have understood the Gita fully, but little, little places, it is, I think, as uh, Netraji has rightly said, hmm. it can be applied in every aspect, whichever aspect you can pick on. And, so many great heroes have been born in the world by reading the Gita only. So many of them, they have got a strength from it. Absolutely. We also have Mahesh Mahindrakar Ji saying, which meditation practice do you follow? Uh, for me, I, I started with that acting karo wala meditation practice, which my <laughs> teacher first told me, pretend you are meditating. But otherwise, there is this, in the Gita only, there is one technique which Krishna talks about, prana, panau, samau, krutva. With keeping your in controlling your breath, inhalation and exhalation, focusing at this point between the eyebrows, grower madhya, just trying to observe your breath as it goes in, as it goes out. That is all. Uh, that is it. See, that is the best meditation. Is what I think. Is Krishna has not said that is the best meditation, mm -hmm. but that is a technique which I feel very easy uh, because once I remember one friend of mine backstabbed me very badly. I came to know in the middle, late in the night. That started uh, getting me very, I was very angry, very disappointed. It was like full, one volcano has only erupted inside. And then I thought, no, this is not right. I talk about controlling anger now. Why am I not able to control? So I started trying to do this meditation technique. And when you're angry, that is the last time you can, last uh, <laughs> moment you can do meditation. Yeah. So it took me 30 minutes though to control my breath that time. But just doing this, and after 30 minutes, I don't know what happened. I suddenly came to terms with what was, what had happened. And I said, why am I getting, at least it's easy to say now, but that time and that heat of the moment to become calm was very big challenge for me. And I was like, what did I do wrong? Or why, why was I so easily fooled? All these questions were troubling me. But as I slowly, the breath started becoming equal. Mm -hmm. Inhalation and exhalation has become equal. Thoughts also went quiet. Then I had a very peaceful sleep after that. So that is my, I'm very close to my sleep. I try to somehow ensure I get six hours of sleep. If I don't, I try to catch up in the day sometime or the other. So that technique is my favorite. The Gita one, which is told by Krishna. Great. Yes. Great, great. Harim, yes. We also have Pra Praveen Patangich ji saying that it was a nice session. Kiran Thakre ji also says that it was very good and informative. And Vishal ji says, great session, amazing discussion. I have a question. How can we enhance emotional intelligence? Okay. Um, emotional, I think there's something called EQ. There is something called IQ. And this earlier it was very, IQ was very important. And later on they said EQ is very important. Now they have introduced a number, something called SQ, which is more important, spiritual question. <laughs> In our uh, Gita, it is actually controlling emotions controlling ourselves, how we speak. It is like what is in our heart should be in our mind, mm -hmm. should be on our tongue. All three are together or uh, all three are one. We actually are at peace. Otherwise, heart thinks one thing, mind thinks second thing, tongue speaks third thing and then creates more fluctuation, I think, uh, Vishalji. Emotional intelligence can be controlled probably. Our emotions can be, by controlling our emotions, one of the best ways is doing dhyana. Another is letting go. I can think of a late Sushma Swaraj's statement. Once she had talked about uh, when things go according to her will, she considers it as Krishna Prasad and she enjoys it. When things go against her will, she calls it Krishna Ichcha. She used to call it. So meaning divine wish. This is divine will. One is divine prasada. When things have happened, it is a God gift for us. We can experience it with joy. When things happen against our will also, probably trying to, if we are able to look at it with balance, we can enjoy life better is what I feel. Good and bad, uh, people praise us or criticize us, uh, friends and foes also, we should treat as one, Krishna says, means no partiality to 
friends also hmm. and enemies also no hatred for any enemy don't like the enemy don't become friends with enemy don't show your back to the enemy and say please backstab me that's not the uh, principle krishna talks about ahimsa but he talks it in a different way in the gita but not that but balance samatvam yoga uchyate keeping that balance is what will control as what i feel uh, but again it is easier uh, said than done true practicing it is more important yes sir yeah hari yes sir so, thank you ji anybody else from the audience has any questions or even if you want to express how you felt about the session you can please unmute and talk or you can send it in the chat box also hello oh, i have a question ji sir uh if one wants to learn about the own our old ancient knowledge and wisdom like how should one start and since our our uh, old knowledge was uh, expressed in sanskrit and now we don't like we are not taught sanskrit and if one wants to learn if one wants to understand how can one start learning and understanding ji sir so Uh, um, this I can answer, Priyanka ji. Yeah, yeah, please. Uh, okay, you. all right. Yes, sir. But uh, Sanskrit is being taught right now freely. There are various organizations which are teaching Sanskrit freely. Maybe you can just try enrolling. They have something called Sanskrit Bharti is having a Dasha Dina Shibira, ten days spoken Sanskrit course, which will actually because we feel Sanskrit is a language of mantras and not a language of communication. So once that break of uh, my mindset that this language is so far away. For me also, Bhagavad Gita was a crazy scripture because I think one time, sometime in 2014, my teacher chanted the Hanuman Chalisa. I was feeling all full of enthusiasm, and I started picking up that scripture. But after studying Gita, I felt suddenly got a connection to. I got the what we can say daring to read Upanishads also to try to understand some of the suktas. I can I not say I understood them fully. So. probably if we try to because uh, gita is a highest scripture which is called uh, gita upanishad itself or it is like sarva upanishado gavo dogtha gopala nandana meaning all the upanishads are like cows and uh, gopal is the milker arjuna is the calf and the gita amritam is the nectar which is uh, there so maybe if you because if you study the gita nobody in the world can tell you or challenge you that you don't know your scripture so you just pick it up you will because there is something in those 700 verses which gives you meaning of all the other scriptures it will help you connect to all other scriptures as well and uh, it is uh, how to do something is by doing it only we have to start just uh, connecting it it's a big journey it's a beautiful one and uh, it is all about practicality look at uh, the place krishna is not using a symposium hall or somewhere to talk battlefield and arjuna is very practical arjuna is allowed to question Arjuna dares to tell Krishna, "Are you fooling me, or do you think uh, I am supposed to believe what you are telling me that you instructed the Surya?" Now, nowhere we have that freedom of questioning between Guru and Shishya, like in the Gita. And Arjuna's questions don't start stop. So we have 18 chapters. If I was in Arjuna's place, I would have asked Krishna what to do. He would have said, "Fight." I would have said, "Yes, sir," and Gita would be over. It would be a boring scripture. But Arjuna is asking these questions. because he is asking it they answer our questions 5000 plus years later we are still looking at gita we are finding references to everyday life problems means uh, people are talking about so many uh, issues which can be solved scientists are talking about it look at the means even psychiatrist krishna's model of psychotherapy is there if you look at uh, pubmed and start searching type bhagavad gita you will find page number 1 page number 2 page number 3 Uh, European Heart Journal in Corona time talked about Gita. Uh, American Journal of Psychiatry. Uh, then uh, so many such journals. Wherever you see, there is something in the Gita. Maybe you can connect to it. It will really empower you. Know, definitely. Yes, my dear. We also have Vithoba Hibare. Namaskar everybody it was enlightening for us many th- about Thank you. things when arjuna was in dilemma at kurukshetra lord krishna explained in detail and showed his virat swarup 
But in today's life, nobody says about shastras and simultaneously shastra. Shastra. Shastra okay. Shastra ko chalna. This message is what he's trying to emphasize. Here. Uh -huh. Ji, ji, ji. Beautiful message. We also have. Yeah, I think we are done with the ji. questions from the yes. chat box. So, what a lo lovely session. And Thank you so much, Prekha Ji. This is an add on to our VVI Youth Club, and we are really, really fortunate to have you. Yeah, actually, I'm, I'm very happy to be able to interact with Priyanka Ji. I think uh, I have only been following her on Facebook, wonderful work that she's been doing. So, I would say it's a very nice. Uh, last time we had a chance to meet in the World Sanskrit Conference, but that was probably for only 10 minutes or something. Right. So, if there is a lecture, I forgot to ask if it is recorded somewhere, you please share. Uh, Recording of what you did speak there. Surely. Yes. Surely. And yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for. Uh, you had told that Sunday was your me time, and still you made time for us. That's Thank a huge you. thing for us. Thank you. And I would also request Srikar Bharadev to please give away the word of thanks. Thank you, Priyanka. So I take the pleasure of take, uh, giving away the vote of thanks for today's meeting. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Shushrut Bade sir for giving such a wonderful uh, session for all of us. I hope like everyone must have taken something or other as a takeaway. Also, I would like to thank our national president Padmakar Bharade sir for his support, constant support and for joining today's call and for motivating all of us. And uh, I'd like to uh, thank Kiran Kakadeji, Vijay Kumar Landeji, Choti Chutkeji, who uh, uh, motivated us by joining this session. Like, uh, we will try, uh, definitely try to uh, follow the footsteps and organize many more events in BVI Youth Club. Apart from that, I would like to try, uh, uh, thank my team, Priyanka Bharade, Priyanka Ganore, Rohan, Saikiran Mahindarkar, and Shubhangini, without whose uh, efforts this session wouldn't have happened and finally i would like to thank all the participants who have joined today's session being it a sunday evening still they took out time for such a uh, topic which generally people don't show interest so i would like uh, i'm very surprised to see the numbers today so we didn't uh, so we uh, it's, this is a very good turn turnout i would like to say thank you everyone thanks a lot Shrikar. With this, I would like to end this session and I would like to share the link to join the youth club if you have if you haven't joined. So it will be shared in the chat box. So please look for the link, open the link and you will see all the different options like what is youth club, how to register, what are the events that are happening, what's the next event, all this information you'll find in this link. So please save it, join us and many more interesting events are going to come up next one what we are planning is somewhat a fun event where we'll all meet online and have some games just to refresh ourselves after that we also have some skill development programs how to speak in front of public how to write something which can attract readers for a longer time how to what are the etiquettes you follow when you go to a job interview these are the things very practical in our life that we require so, so many things are coming up and I can only request you all to join us as soon as possible and attend all our meetings. Once again, thanking our speaker, Sri Sushrut Badhiji for taking out time and maybe we'll trouble you again yes. in the future. Sure, I'm most welcome. I was very happy to. The, Thank you so yeah, much. Having seen the response and I'm sure in the group, there'll be so many messages now asking for uh, requesting you to come back. So, Thank you so much. It was a wonderful yeah. session for me, a beautiful yeah. Sunday. Spent in good company of wonderful people. Thank you so much. Thank you. And thank, thank you, you everybody for joining. See you again in the next event. Jai Bhavsar, Jai Hinglaj.